welcome to my course uh, electrochemical energy storage and uh, today we are in module number 1 where i am introducing um, the chemical energy storage and conversion the basic principles and in the last uh, three lectures i have covered basics of electrochemistry then introduction of primary and secondary batteries and uh, supercapacitor in general and this particular lecture which is lecture number 4 uh, in this lecture i will cover uh, the concepts of uh, thermodynamics which are pertinent to electrochemical cell uh, as you can understand this is a uh, large um, this is a large uh, kind of uh, uh, things that you can uh, uh, think about. Uh, the intention is not to exactly talk about the thermodynamics um, at length, but uh, whatever is necessary for you to understand the electrochemical energy storage pertinent to that, those topics I will cover. So, first uh, I will start. Uh, the entropy, concept of enthalpy and free energies. Then we will talk about free energy and its relation to chemical potential. Then conditions of equilibrium and mass action expression that will be covered. Then we will talk about electrochemical potential. And then uh, the one that you have seen in case of supercapacitor, um, the charge interface is important. So, this charge interface and associated divalence, these concepts will be introduced. Uh, the concept of uh, phase, um, concept of phase uh, which are in equilibrium uh, state in an electrochemical cell that I will cover. And finally, the free energy composition diagram and how it is related to the voltage profile that I will indicate. Now, uh, as you know, uh, first uh, let us talk about the free energy, which is a function of enthalpy and entropy. So, the Gibbs free energy that you need know that it needs to be minimized before equilibrium could be achieved. So, this free energy G that comprises uh, two term, uh, one is enthalpy, uh, this H and another one is entropy. So, in case of enthalpy, we know that uh, when dQ amount of heat is absorbed by a substance and its temperature say is raised by dT, then we can define the heat capacity uh, which is denoted by this small c is uh, the differential of um, the heat that is being absorbed uh, per unit temperature rise. Now, this enthalpy term that also one can write in terms of internal energy, pressure of the system and volume of the system. So, if you differentiate that, you will get this expression. And from first law, you know that this uh, change in internal energy that is uh, the absorbed heat plus the amount of work that is being done. So, we have uh, put this relation here instead of dE, the remaining term uh, remains same. So, in the system, if you consider a constant uh, pressure then this differential term will be 0. So, work we know that is related to minus pressure and change in volume. So, dW is minus P into dV. So, dH at constant P is equal to dQ. So, that means enthalpy is the heat absorbed or released by any substance at constant pressure. You know that, that this Cp, uh, this uh, heat capacity at constant pressure that is dQ dP dQ dT uh, at constant P that is equal to 
dh dt at constant p. So, if you integrate this, um, then you will end up with this relation. So, the formation enthalpy of the elements in their standard state, that means we are assuming temperature around 298 Kelvin, that is termed to be 0. So, elemental enthalpy is 0. Now, if you consider a compound at a particular temperature, then this enthalpy change, uh, this can be given by this relation and usually the expression for Cp is taken uh, uh, as a power series A plus Bt plus Ct by T square, where ABC is concerned and accordingly you can um, get the value of uh, Ht. Now, uh, we will talk about entropy. You know the entropy is a disorder that constitutes macroscopically. Um, you can define it that uh, the change in entropy is uh, the reversible heat uh, that is absorbed in a microscopic domain. And uh, uh, actually Boltzmann has defined this entropy is uh, with the Boltzmann constant and a term which is omega beta. Uh, this is different uh, configuration in which the system can be arranged at constant energy. So, various types of uh, entropy is possible out of that configurational entropy, it relates the number of configuration in which various atoms or defects that can be arranged on a given number of the lattice site. So, that is your configurational entropy. We have another term which is thermal entropy and uh, that is actually number of different configuration in which the atoms or ions can be arranged over a existing energy level. We will talk more about it. And electronic entropy and other forms of entropy is also important that is dependent on the for example, randomization of magnetic or di, di, di electric moments in certain materials. So, configuration entropy uh, as you uh, can see that this is the number of ways um, n back end site and n atom uh, total there is n plus n sites. So, how it can be arranged? So, this can be arranged by this relation n plus n factorial divided by small n factorial and capital N factorial. So, if you apply a Starling's approximation which tells that uh, ln of uh, uh, any variable x uh, factorial is x ln x minus x. Then you can um, uh, adopt this uh, configurational entropy term from this relation is equal to k ln of this. So, ln can be uh, distributed and uh, by uh, applying the Starling approximation you can have this expression. So, you can work it out and uh, um, as a part of your assignment. So, this is relevant when we mix two solids A and B uh, in the form of an ideal solution, uh, then this is uh, actually important. So, configurational entropy uh, is uh, for the ideal solution that is given uh, by this relation. Uh, where the gas constant is Boltzmann constant and Avogadro number and uh, x a small x a and x b they are the mole fraction of a and b. So, we will come back to it when we will derive the free energy of a mixture later on. Now, uh, thermal entropy uh, is related to the atom or ion vibration in a solid. Uh, the uncertainty lies there, exact value of their energy uh, that constitutes thermal entropy, which is defined as ST. So, you can again write that uh, this DST term uh, by this relation, which already I have defined, and now you integrate, you get this particular form. So, microscopically, it can be understood the vibration energy level of atom in a crystal, they are actually quantized. And if the form in, in this particular form atoms behave like a simple harmonic oscillators, 
and spacing between the energy level that can be defined as epsilon which is n plus half into h nu where n can assume any number 0, 1, 2 up to nu uh, and um, actually nu is the bond's characteristics of vibration frequency. So, we can get this relation for nu is half uh, pi s0 m reduced mass to the power half from standard thermodynamics book. Maybe you can consult the book by Barsam, Fundamental of Ceramics to get a better idea about this. Where this S0 is the spring constant and this uh, uh, M red is given by this two mass which are associated. So, eventually epsilon takes the value when you put the value of nu here is like this. So, it can uh, tell you that spacing between the energy level is large for the strong bond and lighter atoms. So, when you are in absolute 0, the atom populates at the lower energy levels which are available and only one kind of configuration exists. When you hit it, probability of exciting atoms to higher energy levels that increases, that means your ST also is increased. So, Einstein uh, simplifies this. So, in Einstein's solid model, it is assumed that a non-metallic crystalline solids, which are ceramic in uh, particular, they consist of uh, uh, Avogadro number for one mole in a V independent harmonic oscillator and all oscillating with the same frequency, uh, which is nu e at all temperature. That is an assumption. So, we can have a simplified equation of the thermal entropy and for very low um, value of kT um, or say any temperature and this kT if it is much larger than this value, then we can simplify it uh, from this exponential series and end up with this particular relation. So, what this relation tells you? that uh, your thermal entropy is monotonically increases with a function of time and it decreases with increasing um, frequency nu e and in fact nu e scales with the bond strength. So, a given temperature ceramic which are having weaker bond strength has higher thermal entropy. So, you know the polymorphic phase transformation will occur from one crystal structure to another crystal structure without changing their composition. Usually, it occurs from a close pack structure to more open structure. So, in case of zirconia monoclinic to uh, tetragonal, that kind of phase transformation occurs. The associated entropy change for phase transformation or the formation of defect particularly is the frequency change from say nu to nu dash. So, then this transformation, this change in entropy is given by this relation 3 r ln of old and new, um, uh, new values ratio. So, as you can see, if this nu is more than nu prime, then this transformation entropy is always positive. Apart from this, we have electronic entropy at 0 degree Kelvin electrons and holes particularly in semiconductors and insulators, they are at the lowest energy state and only one configuration exists at higher temperature, they are excited to higher energy level and the uncertainty of the finding of them in any number of the excited energy level constitutes the form of entropy. There are other forms of entropy which is uh, ceramic material or compounds that might have magnetic or dielectric moment. These moments can be randomly oriented or ordered. When they are ordered, they say magnetic entropy uh, uh, is 0 since there is only one configuration. At temperature increased, then S of this other entropy increases with the increased number of possible configuration. And same thing is applicable to dielectric moment as well. Dielectric 
uh, polarization that can also be arranged under certain condition and uh, with the increase in temperature they can be completely random uh, particularly for a ferroelectric to paraelectric kind of phase transition. So, the total entropy I can say it uh, constitutes of configurational entropy, then uh, thermal entropy, electronic entropy and uh, the other entropy which is the magnetic and dipole moment uh, this I just explained. Now, if you plot this free energy as a function of a parameter which is xi. The xi can be various types of thing, not all relevant to your electrochemical energy storage, but in general, they can be number of vacancies, number of atoms in a gas phase, uh, the extent of a reaction, uh, the number of nuclei in a supercooled liquid uh, when it is being crystallized. So, various types of uh, um, this uh, xi is possible. And uh, as you can see in the equilibrium condition and of course, uh, for two process uh, you have the free energy difference that is given by the enthalpy difference and at that particular temperature the difference in entropy, this is a well known equation. So, at equilibrium condition if you take uh, the value of del G and uh, consider a constant pressure temperature and uh, number of moles, uh, there are many material can be possible in a system. So, so apart from one, if everything um, uh, is uh, remains constant, then your del G by del xi is 0. So, this slope is uh, 0. So, I can define the chemical potential as uh, the change in free energy, we will talk more about it in my latter part of the lecture. And this is the mole uh, content, um, the del of this mole content, uh, when pressure, temperature and other constitutes they are not changing. So, this part uh, is defined as your chemical potential. So, physically the chemical potential is a work that would be required to remove an atom from the bulk of an uncharged solid to infinity at a constant pressure and temperature while keeping other chemical components which is defined as J in the system fixed. So, I guess that you could understand now the significance of this chemical potential. So, standard chemical potential if you define it mathematically then this mu y is uh, uh, constitutes two part one is uh, at standard state and then it depends on gas constant and temperature and uh, ln of uh, the activity part. So, this activity is defined as gamma i into x i where gamma i is the activity coefficient and x i is a mole fraction. Uh, mole fraction that is there in the system. So, usually gamma uh, i uh, is taken as uh, 1 and uh, we call it Henrian activity coefficient. So, this activity is equal to mole fraction uh, once the gamma is 1. So, the measurement of activity although it is not very relevant for this lecture, but still I will just go through it. So, you can measure it. So, measure the uh, value of AI partial pressure measurement of the species, this is a tangible solution and this can be defined um, as uh, partial pressure of phi and P0 is the partial pressure in the standard state. So, for gases we are considering gas, this P0 is atmosphere 1 atmosphere or it is about 0.1 mega Pascal. So, the experiment that is done is uh, you take an element M and evacuate a sealed container which is there in a sealed container, heat at a temperature T and then equilibrate it and measure the value of P m that partial pressure of the metal at standard state. Now, you consider an alloy of M and N uh, say you have taken 50-50 uh, and repeat the same experiment. 
So, you can have three possible outcome. The first outcome is the fraction of M in the gas phase is equal to their fraction in the alloy which was 0 0.5. Then the solution is term ideal. So, A i is P i by P 0 that is 0 0.5 that is equal to the mole fraction and gamma i is equal to 1. Likewise, the fraction of M in gas phase could be less than 0 0.5. So, your gamma i is coming less than 1. So, that means physically that M atom prefers to be in the solid and when gamma i is more than 1, then M atom that prefers to be in the gaseous state. So, you measure the partial pressure of an element or a compound in its pure state and by repeating the measurement with alloy, its activity you can estimate. So, if I take uh, a simple equation. Uh, like a solid is reacting with a gas component to form another solid and the free energy change is del G reaction, then I can relate this chemical equilibrium and mass action uh, expression. So, the mathematical expression for your chemical potential for M x, this is a standard form and R T L n of its activity. Similarly, for M also you can write the standard form and R T L n activity of M. And for the gaseous form, you can see that this is this half will come because of this pre uh, term half. So, half mu 0 of x 2 is, is it is in the standard term and R T L n of partial pressure of this gas. So, if you can uh, calculate the free energy change associated with this relation, then this is the product and this is the reactant. So, product minus reactant M and this gas and insert this expression of chemical potential. So, your free energy change del G reaction that is given by this relation and this part, the standard part uh, you can consider at del G 0, that means at standard state uh, the value of del G and R T L n k, this term will remain there. So, k stands for activity of M x divided by activity of M into partial pressure of x 2 to the power half. So, this is the uh, constant term uh, that you are getting. So, this relation uh, you can uh, achieve from chemical potentials through mass action expression, we will be using that. So, again we go back to the same equation and free energy change associated with this relation is del G R X n. So, the driving force for any reaction that is basically composed of two things one is how likely one expect in the reaction to occur under standard condition. Second, the reactants may or may not be in their standard states. So, the driving force del G R x n for a reaction then is given by this relation which just now I have proved. So, this is in the non-standard case. Now, this value del G R x n 0 is the free energy change associated with the reaction when the reactants in their standard state. Now, what is this standard state? K I have already defined, this is the mass ex action expression, activity of M x, activity of metal and partial pressure of the gas is all 1 under standard state. So, K from this relation it is coming to be 1. So, you know ln K ln 1 is 0. So, your uh, free energy change in standard condition is del G R x n at equilibrium del G R x n is 0. So, you can put the value del G R x n is 0 and then this k whatever you are estimating that is known as equilibrium constant of the reaction and it is defined as k under, underscore uh, equilibrium. So, you are seeing that 1 is 0. So, this one is del G R x n is minus R T L n q. So, in, in equilibrium, this k equilibrium you can estimate through this relation exponential is equal to minus standard state at standard state the reaction energy divided by R t. Now, electrochemical potential um, 
um, is, is the work that is needed to bring one mole of I species, any species from infinity to the bulk phase. So, in ionic ceramics, this is important and ion in solution, the definition needs to be modified. So, electrochemical potential is uh, your um, eta I and that is given by this relation. For a charged particle, the net charge is J di into E and phi is the electric potential and this is the Avogadro number. So, if you reorganize that yields this uh, molar electrochemical potential, this gives this relation. So, this product E and Avogadro number that is nothing but Faraday constant. So, if you put the value of E 1.6 10 raise to minus 19 coulomb and the value of uh, Avogadro number 6.0 to 3 10 to the power 23, then you get uh, the value is 96500 coulomb per equivalent. So, I get this relation back, um, the relation between uh, electrochemical potential and um, uh, the chemical potential that is associated with this terminology. The value of z, uh, the value of phi as well as the Faraday constant. So, the driving force of a charged species uh, is the gradient of its electrochemical potential. So, in the condition for equilibrium now, it is the uh, d uh, of this electrochemical potential uh, with respect to x. So, d n i d eta i by d x that is equal to 0. So, that means in order to insert a charged particle into a given phase, the interface has to be crossed. I will talk about lithium ion battery, we will see that lithium ion insertion in the electrode material, this is the case what is happening. So, it is the atom is not in a <coughs> charge uh, free state. So, if that interface is charged with respect to bulk, the electric work must be considered and this we will discuss more when we will talk. Um, about the electrochemical properties of uh, the um, ceramic material. So, now um, uh, most interface uh, and surface they are indeed charged. The several factors that contribute that include um, the type of the interface and class of the ceramic material uh, in the non metallic type of uh, materials. So, you can see that ion in a bulk, uh, they are subjected to a symmetric force by the anions, this cation bond. Now, near the interface, uh, the force are no longer uh, symmetric and ions migrate one way or another. So, migration is possible. So, what happens that if you dip this uh, in an electrolyte, uh, which is having a salt, um, then depending on this charge surface, uh, which is shown uh, the sheet of positive charge here at the interface, from the electrolyte, uh, the negative uh, anion, they got attracted and forms a stern layer here at the first interface. But once you move into the uh, solution, you will see that the concentration of this negative ions, they are not that large. So, positive and negative ions, slowly positive ions are coming into play cations uh, of the salt, um, which has been dissociated in the electrolyte. So, they basically form a electric double layer. So, this is the type of electric double layer that is formed. And uh, uh, as I told that the net positive charge is compensated by a distribution of negatively charged cation vacancies in the bulk and charge distribution of cation vacancies, they lead to the double layer formation. So, you can estimate the value of double layer by this simple expression, uh, which constitutes the number of uh, defect in the bulk. So, this material is not perfect. It depends on the dielectric constant of the electrolyte 
and the other parameter like temperature, charge associated with the cation and so on. So, this is only applicable to a dilute solution and at higher concentration it breaks down. So, sheet of charge equal in magnitude to the surface charge at a distance of lambda from the interface, this is called the Debye length and this Debye length is actually the thickness of the double layer. Now, we will talk about the phase that is there inside the material. So, you can see in a electrochemical chain, you have metal which is current collector then you may have another metal like copper, then you have electrolyte solution, then you have uh, inside the electrolyte solution a solid salt, then you have another metal and then you have uh, the final current collector. So, uh, you can estimate uh, or you can assume there is no concentration gradient in the electrolyte. So, under condition where this cell is not drawing any power, we call it is a open circuit condition and this is uh, must be under equilibrium. So, open circuit potential is related to the difference in their electrochemical potential of electrons which is there in alpha and alpha dash the two terminal things. So, as I said this phase alpha is in equilibrium with beta that is in equilibrium with delta then epsilon and then finally phi. So, you can write under equilibrium condition that this mu value of a component A in delta phase that is equal to mu of this component A in sigma phase uh, sorry uh, this epsilon phase. Similarly, in case of charge spaces such as electron in metal, the electrochemical potential must be same. So, here constitutes the metal ion, uh, metal uh, sorry, metal contains electron. So, this in alpha phase that will be equal to beta phase and so on. I will cite one example. So, this is the chain platinum, one metal, then copper, then copper sulfate in H2O, then you have another copper metal. <coughs> and then you have a current collector. So, from our definition phase equilibrium relationship this equation is valid. So, I have already told you that you can calculate the cell potential which is Faraday constant and this is equilibrium potential the voltage um, at open circuit that is the chemical potential of electron in alpha this metal minus chemical potential of uh, um, electron in alpha dash this metal. So, the reaction all the reaction is taking place here. So, copper is uh, getting uh, uh, you see um, copper is getting oxidized uh, we are assuming and uh, electron is going through this metal. So, here uh, if you put the chemical potential this will be chemical potential for this plus this. So, I can easily calculate now the chemical potential of E uh, from this part onwards. So, we have done this you see that this will be mu Cu minus mu Cu 2 plus divided by 2. So, that is why this half term is coming. So, you put this in the whole series and you will come up with this relation. So, that means with chemical potential you can actually estimate under equilibrium condition what is the value of u. So, using this phase equilibrium and electrode reaction equilibrium conditions we are able to relate the cell potential with chemical potential of participating species. This is one of the most important uh, derivation. I have given here another example the same kind of electronic chain and I leave it on you to calculate this value the electron chemical potential in alpha and electron chemical potential in alpha dash. Now, here you must remember that it is not a single phase relation. Here I have put lithium. So, lithium is getting oxidized and you have also titanium chloride salt here. So, this titanium chloride salt is having this kind of relation. 
So, these two reactions are going on in between. So, you can write the expression for chemical um, potential for uh, the lithium as well as for tellurium chloride and then substitute this value the way I did it in the last case. Uh, and you can basically estimate um, the uh, VOC uh, voltage under open circuit condition. And you can see uh, this is uh, a nice example that shows the cell potential is related to the thermodynamic properties of the neutral spaces because the charge spaces is somehow it gets cancelled. So, only neutral spaces uh, that is there and this is good because we cannot measure exactly the chemical potential of the charge spaces since it is difficult to isolate. So, if our voltage term constitutes uh, only the neutral species that is making our life easier. Finally, uh, uh, this I will not elaborate in this lecture uh, because uh, I will elaborate in um, other lectures, uh, but uh, just to maintain the continuity you know that uh, uh, in a two phase mixture of uh, two different types of uh, atoms say this green and blue. So, always you can derive uh, the uh, free energy change uh, after the mixing and uh, this relation is uh, with the mole fraction and the chemical potential of X and the other component which is the, in this case is lithium. And then you can write uh, this relation um, and uh, eventually you can plot the free energy uh, diagram. So, in this case uh, it is a solid solution because one component is homogeneously mixed with others. And in this case this is a two phase mixture although I have shown that this is affluent in green and this is affluent in blue but uh, one or two uh, green uh, also you assume that that is there. So, it is a clear cut uh, mixture of two. So, in case of a solid solution you can actually estimate I will show later part of uh, your assignment problem that how to get this one and in case of a mixture of two phase you get two uh, del G minima here. Now, the important part here is that at any composition of lithium, uh, if you can draw a tangent, then wherever it cuts this axis where lithium is maximum, that will give you the chemical potential of lithium. For the other phase, the chemical potential you can get from here. Same thing applies here. So, if you draw uh, at this particular composition a tangent, it will come here. For this one, it will come here. And if you have a common tangent that indicates that the phase mixture here, this phase mixture, they are having the minimum free energy condition. So, this is just the implication of the free energy change and composition diagram. What is more important is that once you have this chemical potential known from this composition, then you can relate it with the equation that I have shown F into U. Uh, of course, in equilibrium state um, is equal to your cathode chemical potential minus m naught chemical potential. So, you can basically at each point estimate the voltage. So, we will show how exactly it works. So, this is the expression that you are having and you can see that if you have a solid solution, then you have a sloping voltage profile as you put more lithium during your discharge into the cathode, then you will see that this kind of sloping voltage. But instead, if you have a two phase mixture, then we will prove later that it will give you a uh, constant kind of thing and then it will fall here and here. So, shape of the voltage profile that can be related with the free energy versus composition diagram. So, the reference is uh, this two nice book uh, as I have said I have not covered everything, uh, but whatever is needed for you to understand in future I mean the topics that I will be describing. So, these two books are important. So, in this particular lecture we have introduced enthalpy, entropy, configurational, thermal, electronic and other types, then free energy, 
then free energy and chemical potential, then chemical equilibrium and mass action expressions. Then we introduce the term electrochemical potential, then electrode electrolyte interaction, concept of phase equilibrium, at least in the equilibrium state, and how you can estimate the open circuit potential under equilibrium. And then finally, I have touched the grip free energy composition diagram with voltage profile. Thank you for your interest.